So hi everyone, um, my name is Jeff Lark and I run a team at NVIDIA that manages uh, HPC programming models and standards and HPC software. And so I'm gonna to talk to you about our HPC software stack. I apologize if my voice comes across a little bit froggy. Um, if the audio drops very suddenly during the talk, it's probably not the connection, it's probably me uh, muting quickly, but uh, I'll uh, sh struggle through it with you. I'm gonna stop my video. And um, so there's, uh, you know, three high-level topics I, I'd like to try to squeeze into this 30 minutes. <clears throat> First, I want you to understand um, our vision for how you should program to an NVIDIA platform. And I want to talk as well about how the NVIDIA platform is more than just GPUs and, and what all is uh, it, it includes. Then I'm going to talk about the HPC SDK, which is how um, all of the NVIDIA software is installed on the uh, on Perlmutter and on, on other systems as well, and make sure you understand uh, what that provides for you and uh, and how you how you get it and how you access it. And then I'm going to talk a bit about uh, programming uh, for machines like Perlmutter with uh, standards-based uh, approaches, which means uh, not having to rely on uh, domain-specific APIs or um, you know things like uh, OpenMP or OpenAC or CUDA, but actually be able to write directly in uh, C++ or Fortran. So the HPC software team has uh, four major initiatives. You'll see a couple of these again uh, when I get to the math libraries. But uh, first, we want to make uh, using our platform completely seamless. And so that means uh, making it simple to uh, to take advantage of all of the available hardware. So I include in this being able to write a native C++ or native Fortran application that can run on the CPU or the GPU or even take advantage of things like uh, the GPU tensor cores. You know, all of this... Uh, these these uh, great hardware features should be exposed to you in a way that is easy and seamless to uh, to use. Next, it's important we scale up. Uh, you saw a picture of the the Perlmutter node; and it has four GPUs on it. So, uh, you know, it's pretty rare to find a, a GPU machine with just one GPU on the node. Now they're larger uh, uh, larger machines. And so, first, the libraries need to enable you to uh, just scale up. Uh, to all of the GPUs on your node, but even be able to scale up to full system scale. And some of our math libraries now uh, can uh, scale things like uh, multi-dimensional FFTs or linear solvers up to full system scale uh, for you. Uh, next, working in uh, domain libraries. And so one that we've been working in a lot recently is quantum. So identifying uh, specific domains that have very specific needs and develop libraries to support those needs. So for quantum, we developed libraries to support uh, quantum circuit simulation. For things like signal processing, we developed uh, pa software packages to support that. So identifying these uh, important domains that have uh, individualized needs and being able to address those needs. And lastly, ARM is an important part of uh, of our ecosystem. Although uh, Perlmutter doesn't have uh, any ARM nodes, I think you've probably seen that NVIDIA does have some ARM CPU is coming, and so we need to make sure that those are well as well supported as uh, x86 is uh, today. So looking at the uh, broad NVIDIA platform, how do we expect you to, to program to this? And I want to emphasize platform because uh, often people uh, think of NVIDIA uh, as the, the GPU company, and we certainly uh, have, have made our names for our GPUs. Uh, we also have, you know, coming next year, our uh, Grace CPUs, and we also have, of course, some embedded CPUs as well, and our uh, our network interconnect through the uh, Mellanox and Finiman. So we need to provide a programming strategy that addresses all of these. It's really a disservice to the users if each of these technologies has a distinct way to, to program. It makes things uh, much more difficult to use. The foundation of all of that is our accelerated libraries. And when I excel say accelerated libraries, people frequently think immediately of our math libraries, which are a really important feature we provide. Things like uh, linear algebra solvers, uh, FFTs, random number generation, uh, tensor solvers, things like that. And we do provide very highly tuned math libraries that improve over time. Uh, but those aren't our only libraries. Uh, core libraries are things like libq++, and thrust, which provide high-level data structures and algorithms. Uh, communication libraries providing a well-tuned MPI, Nickel, and VSHMEM, and even higher-level frameworks for data analytics, AI, and, and quantum circuit simulation as well. This is the foundation, and for many developers, you could start by, uh, by writing code to use these math libraries. So if you're doing 
large scale FFTs, we've got a library for you. If you're doing large linear solvers, we have a library for you. But it also enables us to, uh, to layer on top of that, gives us a firm foundation for these other programming approaches. And I've broken them down into to kind of three uh, high, level, um, uh, high level ideas. Now, many people assume that uh, our goal is to get absolutely everybody writing in uh, some form of CUDA, whether it's CUDA C++ or CUDA Fortran. Uh, these CUDA languages are our languages of innovation. We could co-design those with our hardware, so when every uh, new uh, hardware release has new hardware features, we can expose them directly here. Um, but it's not necessarily the right programming model for everyone. It's a, it's a language uh, for platform specialization. If you uh, want to get the take advantage of all of the hardware features we have or want to optimize your application and specialize it to the GPU that you have in front of you, uh, you know, the CUDA C++ and Fortran give you all the tools and knobs and bells and whistles to do that. But it's certainly not the only approach to our, our platform. The far opposite side is the one that I'm most excited about, which is accelerated standard programming languages. So here I'm showing uh, ISO C++ and ISO Fortran, where I am writing native C++ and Fortran with no extensions, nothing platform specific. In both of these cases, this code can be built and run on multi-core CPUs, or even offload it to GPUs automatically. And we're working on some of the major uh, Python packages as well to make a, a, a similar experience in Python, even though it's not an ISO language. Um, writing your code this way means your code is parallel first. So whether you're coming to a GPU platform, a CPU platform, uh, an FPGA, a DSP, it doesn't matter. If your platform supports ISO C++, it's going to run out of the box. And that's a really exciting thing because it means you're not uh, porting your application to the platform, uh, you know, you're ready to run day uh, day zero. Now, sitting between these approaches is uh, compiler directives, which provide incremental opportunities. And there's really two main ways we see directives used. And at the top is OpenACC, and the bottom is OpenMP. Uh, one, you could use it like I'm showing here, where you write something in, say, uh, you know, Fortran do concurrent or C++ uh, standard library. And use compiler directives to incrementally perform, uh, and uh, portably improve the performance. So here I'm taking control of my data movement. Uh, so that enables you to write fewer directives than you would have uh, because the parallelism is handled in the language, uh, but still uh, optimize things like data movement in a, in a portable way. The other way uh, compiler directives are popular is for legacy applications. If you have hundreds of thousands or millions of lines of code, uh, it's unrealistic to expect you to rewrite it all overnight. Uh, compiler directives provide a nice means of leveraging your existing code, getting as much as possible running in parallel, running on the GPU. And then once you're running that on the GPU, you could go and evaluate, well, maybe uh, certain parts of my code should be refactored and rewritten in one of these uh, standard approaches. Or maybe I have one solver that is just so important, I want to get the maximum possible performance. And maybe I could write just that part of CUDA. So that illustrates the last point of this slide, which is all of these approaches mix together nicely. You're not picking one swim lane and sticking to it, but in fact, uh, there's existence of, of applications that do the bulk of their work and do concurrent and, and, and math libraries, and then it sprinkle in some directives here or there, and, and maybe even have a function in, in, in uh, Fortran uh, and, and CUDA, and all of that will mix together nicely. So. Uh, so our goal is to provide you with the accelerated standard language as a way to write your code once and uh, and expect it to run uh, everywhere and anywhere. So here, uh, I, you depending on my compiler flag, it understands to build this for a CPU I want to run on some number of coarse grade threads, or for a GPU on some larger number of uh, fine grade threads, and uh, the code itself remains the same. Now, this is supported through a software product called the HPC SDK, and we've worked very closely with uh, the folks at uh, NURSE to make sure this is, uh, and also with uh, with HPE, the system integrator, to make sure that this works uh, really well on your platform. And if you looked at the, the slide earlier, you saw that HPC SDK was the one uh, software package that had uh, you know, green bars all the way across. It supports all of the, uh, the, the uh, programming models available. HPC SDK is a completely free product. Uh, regardless of whether you have a GPU, you can download this and install it on your personal machine. Uh, it's available on uh, on Perlmutter and on all of the major supercomputers. It's available on all of the major clouds. Uh, and so you can right away begin to use this for free 
um, uh, everywhere. Uh, it supports x86 uh, ARM and open power, so it's a portable software stack. If uh, today you're running on Perlmutter and, and next week you want to run on an ARM computer by taking the HBC SDK, all of the, the software libraries that you need are built in and ready to go uh, right on that new platform. So we support all of the programming models I discussed. It comes with four compilers. NVCC is the CUDA compiler, and NVC, C++, and Fortran are, are the C, C++, and Fortran compilers. We call these our HBC compilers. And a huge range of libraries. I can't even list them all here, including communication libraries. And so... Uh, what's really nice with this package is all of these pieces are tested to make sure they work well together. So this entire software stack is well tested. Uh, so no matter where you go, you can expect that it will uh, work uh, seamlessly. And lastly, we do provide profi profilers and debuggers because it's really important for you as a developer to be able to understand, okay, uh, if I'm hitting an error or I'm hitting a performance issue, uh, why am I hitting that? So uh, just to, to say it one more time, completely free and downloadable. Uh, from our website as a container via SPAC and on the cloud. And we, we release uh, every odd month and the occasional even month as well. So our next release is expected in uh, November. An important part of uh, that package is the HPC compilers. Now, I know many of you that have been around uh, uh, NERSC and, and the other DOE sites for a while are familiar with the PGI compilers. Uh, several years ago, actually, uh, Almost 10 years ago now, NVIDIA purchased uh, PGI, and uh, and we've put a ton of work into those compilers, so much so that we can't even call them PGI anymore. We call them the NVIDIA HPC compilers. Uh, so they do have that uh, uh, that lineage, but they've come a long way since then, and we've added features like the standard parallelism, uh, you know, additional programming models and, and additional uh, platforms. So. It supports all of our GPU platforms, and so you can automatically, in some cases, offload to GPUs. Uh, all of the programming models I discussed, uh, it is a great CPU compiler as well. You don't need a GPU to take advantage of this, and it supports compiler directives and uh, vectorization. And lastly, it's uh, multi-platform. The other important piece of the HPC SDK is our math libraries. Uh, these first two I've kind of covered already, but the additional uh, uh, high-level initiatives here are that uh, we are building libraries to be more composable. As our GPUs have gotten larger and larger, uh, in some cases, you know, writing a, uh, uh, you know, a single, uh, having a, a single matrix that's large enough to, uh, to saturate an entire GPU may not be realistic for scientific applications. So we've built uh, composable functions where you can uh, call into the libraries from within your existing kernels, which saves you uh, data movement costs, launch overheads, and things like that. And lastly, um, at you know, making sure that we, uh, when Grace does come, that we provide the best, uh, best possible uh, performance libraries for, uh, for the ARM CPUs as well. So here is a, you know, a swath of, of our libraries. I don't think this is even a complete picture. And in most cases, you can tell from the name uh, what, uh, what they do. I'll highlight two recent uh, uh, enhancements. In both cases, these are our multi-GPU um, libraries. So here, uh, QSolver MP. Uh, QSolver does uh, you know linear solvers, things like uh, LU, Cholesky, QR, Eigen solvers, things like that. Uh, what I'm highlighting here is the multi uh, the multi-GPU and multi-node aspects. So uh, lower is better here, and the gray bar is a library, that, uh, community library called Atlas. You can see it scales up here to about 1,024 GPUs. Uh, with the green bar, you can see we've taken our uh, QSolver MP, and it not only improved the performance, but improved the scalability out to, uh, here I'm showing 4,096 GPUs on Summit. So this means if you have large solvers that might you might have used in the past, like Scalapack, now you know, we can support scaling up to uh, to all of the GPUs you have available automatically. And we can do the same thing with uh, FFTs. Here I'm showing uh, um, uh, where we're scaling up uh, the problem size as we increase the number of GPUs. You can see reaching 4,000 GPUs with a very large 3D FFT. Um, and, um, and performance is great. Uh, we support uh, 2D and 3D. We support slab and pencil decomposition. We greatly prefer slab because it gives, uh, you see a picture here, it gives a lot more work for the GPU, uh, but we do support pencils as well and, and as well as having functions to convert between these. 
So that's it for the libraries. There's uh, several uh, talks available on the NVIDIA's website. Let's go into greater detail about uh, more of our libraries. To talk about the standard languages, uh, I'm going to highlight uh, both C++ and Fortran here. So C++ is, uh, has been since C++ 17 a parallel language. Uh, it introduced, C++17 introduced the Parallel Algorithms Library. So we already had a list of high-level algorithms in the in the uh, C++ standard library. C++17 added the idea of providing an execution policy. So I could say, go run this sequentially, or hey, this is something that can actually safely be run in parallel. So that enables you to exploit both your threaded, your parallel, uh, and, and vector concurrency. C++17 also made some guarantees for forward progress to avoid deadlock and clarifications to the memory model to avoid race conditions. Uh, the reason I highlight these is at the same time, we were building those features into our hardware. So the last several GPU releases have had these matching guarantees, which means that uh, we have known now for many years that uh, we wanted to be able to support all of C++ on our GPUs. Uh, we do uh, continue to work in the C++ committee. There's new features coming in C++23 that we're excited about and that we're uh, beginning to uh, to preview in our compiler. And we're already working on C++26 and will later this year release a prototype of a feature that's not even expected in C++ until C++26. So we're very excited about making sure that uh, C++ is a mature language for parallelism and concurrency because that's a like the tide, raising all of the boats, making this available, uh, these, these features available everywhere. One application I'll highlight is a mini app from Lawrence Livermore uh, called uh, uh, Lulesh. Uh, it's a hydrodynamics mini app, and uh, the baseline code is C++ with OpenMP, and this is one example function. You can see this is fairly typical OpenMP. I'm spawning my CPU threads. I'm work sharing my work here, and... I have a NF def at the top to uh, handle a uh, sequential um, consistency. If we look at this code on the right, this is the exact same function doing the exact same thing, but written using uh, a C++ standard algorithm. So you can see the code is uh, much more compact, uh, which should make it long-term easier to maintain. It's completely ISO uh, compliant, which means it's portable to every ISO C++ compiler. And on top of all of that, it actually turns out to be faster too. So here I'm uh, showing uh, three compilers, the Intel compiler, the GNU compiler, and, and NBC++. Um, this is running on AMD Epic CPU. Uh, I don't recall if these are the same CPUs as, as on Perlmutter, but they're in a the, uh, similar family. And you can see the performance of the OpenMP code across these compilers is comparable. If I take the time to tune all of my uh, environment variables, I can get them even closer together, but this is the default setting. If I look at the, the code written in just ISO C++, you can see across the board, the code gets faster on the same CPU. And why is that? Well, I think there's uh, some advantages the compiler has to staying in a single, single programming model. It has more complete uh, understanding of the code. It can optimize better. But I think as well, there are some performance uh, inefficiencies in the OpenMP code uh, that could bring it uh, you know, closer to performance. But this is the, the baseline code as provided by, uh, by the, the customer. Lastly, changing one compiler flag, I could take this C++ code, no extensions, no directives, and run it on the GPU as well. And so you can see here, uh, I'm taking the exact same pure C++ code, running across three different compilers and two different hardware platforms. So Lulesh is a mini app. Uh, Maya is a full uh, application written at RWTH Aachen University. It's about a half a million lines of code. It's been written over the course of a long period of time. So this is not something that can be rewritten overnight. Uh, they did, however, go to some of their individual solvers and replace their OpenMP with uh, just straight uh, C++ parallelism. Now here are the results for their lattice multiple solver. And you can see the OpenMP and the C ISO C++ are comparable in performance. In fact, this is after they, uh, they fixed a, a significant OpenMP performance bug that, that uh, was initially in the code. And uh, taking this code unmodified, they can run it on uh, all of the GPUs on their node or using MPI, scale it up to their full system scale. So they're very excited about these results and have now begun to work through their, their other numerical methods to uh, 
uh, make this uh, MPI plus ISOC plus plus their uh, their standard going forward. We're doing very similar things at Fortran. Fortran is a very widely used language within the DOE in particular, but around the world. Um, and it has a history of parallelism as well. So uh, there's three ways to parallel program in Fortran. We support two of them. First is uh, array math intrinsics. So these are things like calling matmol or reshape on your arrays. Uh, there's lots of parallelism deeply embedded in that that we can take advantage of. Second, uh, using the do concurrent loop, which is something that was added in Fortran 2008. It was extended in 2018. It's being extended again in 2023, and we actually already support that feature that adds reductions um, to uh, do concurrent loops. And so you can write all of your uh, data parallel loops uh, now using uh, do concurrent uh, without the need of uh, uh, any compiler directives at all. Lastly is co-arrays. Co-arrays can be thought of as a uh, an alternative to MPI. We don't currently support that in our in our compilers. We would like to eventually, but we don't have that today. One application I'll highlight for um, Fortran is uh, MiniWeather. This is uh, developed at Oak Ridge National Lab. It is a teaching code, but it's used as a part of the Spec HPC benchmark suite. There's an OpenMP version. There's OpenACC version. There's even versions written in various uh, C++ frameworks as well. Um, in terms of the code, you know, if you are a Fortran programmer, this code will look uh, very uh, easy to understand. Matter of fact, uh, the bulk of this code is exactly the same as the OpenACC and OpenMP versions. The difference is I replaced uh, a triply nested do loop with a do concurrent. Uh, the compiler could take this code, build it for CPU threads, and as you see here, the performance is uh, on par with OpenMP. Uh, OpenMP actually handled the thread affinity slightly better, so it's uh, the Duke is ever so slightly slower uh, in this case, or uh, can run it on the GPU and it's comparable with the OpenACC. So we get very good performance and portability uh, using uh, Duke Kurt. Uh, another application is POT3D. This is also a, a spec HPC benchmark suite. Uh, and why I like to highlight this one. Uh, they had an existing OpenACC code here, lower is better. Uh, and they wanted to see how far can we get without any directives at all. And so they rewrote uh, OpenACC code using compiler directives. And what they found was they were about 10% slower than their OpenACC code, which is actually fairly acceptable to them, but they wanted to understand why. And so they dug in and determined, well, you know, part of the reason we can run uh, Fortran Duke and Kernel on the GPU is because we could use something called CUDA managed memory which uh, when you allocate your data, it's visible both to the CPU and the GPU, and under the hood, it will migrate according to usage. Uh, and so um, they, what they eventually found is they use OpenACC with managed memory, they get the same performance as the do concurrent. So clearly this 10% performance loss was due to the uh, automatic migration of data. And so they put back in some minimal OpenACC to handle uh, the data movement, to optimize the data movement, and their performance was then the same. So here, uh, they stripped away some 400 lines of, uh, of directives or something like that uh, and wrote all of the parallelism in Fortran and the data movement in uh, compiler directives. And then uh, one more thing I'll highlight here is a, a recent uh, enhancement is games. Uh, games you've probably heard of is a computational chemistry application that's very widely used. It's been developed for some 40 years. Uh, their baseline code is MPI plus OpenMP and they have that on the CPU and they also have that for the GPU using the, the, the uh, offloading directives. A student at Iowa State rewrote this portion, took out the directives and put in do concurrent. And you can see here the results was actually a pretty dramatic uh, performance improvement over the OpenMP. And she did go through to try to further optimize the OpenMP and this was the after the optimizations. So why is this? Well, OpenMP is pretty strict in what the compiler uh, can and should do to your uh, to your code when, uh, when encountering these directives. Uh, do concurrent is more uh, descriptive. It gives the compiler a, a whole lot of freedom in what it uh, can uh, can do. And so it can make smarter optimization decisions. So this um, there's a paper coming for this. It's uh, not, not available yet, but uh, look for it next year to, to show these results. So with like four minutes left, let me uh, come to some conclusions here. Uh, first, the HPC SDK is a complete and portable toolkit for HPC developers. It's available in Perlmutter. Uh, via a, uh, a module load or on your own machine via a download. I encourage you to check it out because 
it is portable across uh, you know all of the major architectures. Second, NVIDIA supports a wide range of programming models. Uh, I think uh, I would actually say that we have the the, the greatest choice of composable uh, and mature programming models of a, of uh, any HPC vendor. And lastly, I can only scratch the surface in uh, you know, 30 minutes here, so I, I picked out my four favorite talks for uh, uh, GT this past GTC and linked to them here. Uh, full disclosure: this last one was mine, and uh, my voice is a, a lot less uh, painful to listen to in uh, in that one. So I encourage you to go back and watch these. And with that, I have about four minutes left if there's uh, any questions you'd like me to answer. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Jeff. Uh, we have a couple of questions in the chat. So the first question is from uh, Josh. And the question is, um, do any NVIDIA SDKs have licensing concerns or considerations that need to be noted uh, when deploying on non-NVIDIA platforms? I uh, did notice that on your previous slide, uh, you had mentioned NVIDIA GPU and AMD CPU, so. Uh... Yeah, so um, the HPC SDK, uh, it's freely available. There, uh, if you, there is a EULA, the EULA does have uh, a carve out so that you can distribute uh, the necessary runtime libraries to make it possible to, uh, to build and distribute your, uh, your, your software appropriately. Um, you could certainly, if, you, if all you have is an Intel CPU, uh, you go off and download this, you can still build it. If all you have is an ARM CPU, go off and build it. Uh, you know, it's, uh, so this is uh, freely available. But yes, of course, go, re go read the, uh, the EULA. But we tried to be as uh, generous as possible. There's no charge to it. There's no renewing a license. It's uh, download off our website. It's free to use. Thank you. Uh, another question is, what would be the best place to suggest um, or request new features in CUDA math libraries? CUDA math libraries? Um, I would say uh, your best bet is to uh, to float them up through uh, the nurse help desk. Uh, the nurse uh, they have a direct line to our uh, to our uh, engineering and our product managers to uh, to make that happen. Uh, but you can also post on our uh, our forums as well. Uh, another question is what is MP in CUDA? Uh, sorry, Q Solver MP and Q FFT MP are these available through previously existing Q Solver and Q FFT APIs? Yeah, so we um, that I believe stands for multiprocessor. Uh, so there's KuSolver, which is the kind of single GPU, and KuSolver MP is the uh, the multi uh, multiprocessor version. The uh, the API um, does uh, translate. Well, I think there's I think you have to add the two letters to it, but otherwise the the API is very familiar. And the reason for the naming them differently is it does make it a little bit easier when uh, if all you need is the single node or all you need is the multi node, it, it helps with the, the linking and, and distribution. Uh, we have two more questions. So in Fortran 2023, um, uh, does do concurrent support reductions on array variables? I believe it does. So actually that, uh, that pot 3d code, um, one thing I did gloss over is they actually, uh, had, did not go down to zero compiler directives. They had to leave in three, one for picking which GPU on the node they wanted and two atomics, which were for array reductions. We have since implemented that in our compiler. So um, to the best of my knowledge, it's both supported in the, um, in the standard and in our compiler now. Uh, our next question is from our next, uh, next, next speaker. Yep. Next speaker. Uh, sorry. What other compilers will run standard C++ on GPUs? Yep, great question. Uh, so um, there's a paper coming um, at Supercomputing by uh, the folks at the University of Bristol, Simon McIntosh Smith's group that goes into a study of this. Um, and I believe they were able to, uh, to build for Intel GPUs uh, with using Intel's compiler stack and a very small shim. Uh, the difference being, you know, we chose to use the standard execution policy and Intel chose to use a, uh, a, a unique one to themselves, a DPC++ execution policy. So they had a, a six line of code shim to, to translate between, but otherwise the code was, uh, the rest of the code was portable. Um, I'm not aware of one for AMD GPUs at the moment, uh, and we are, you know, in discussions with the community to to better to to support this uh, to support this better. 